To get to Antarctica from Ushuaia, you have to cross the Drake Passage. It was my third crossing, and I always approach it with apprehension, as the passage is stuff of legends. You hope for calm seas and fair winds, but they say there's a 50-50 chance that it could be a rock and roll experience. This time, we were lucky. The seas were fairly calm, and we reached the South Shetland Islands about 30 hours after leaving Ushuaia. The day at sea allows you to settle in, familiarize yourself with the ship, and if you're lucky, you get a wandering albatross follow you part of the way. I wasn't that lucky. During the crossing, we had to go through a bio-inspection of our clothing and equipment to ensure we didn't contaminate the landing sites with alien species. Well, uh, again, here I am. I did get a shot of my uh, albatross this morning. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty windy. Uh, we're uh, started past the uh, the first of the South Shetland Islands. We're heading for the peninsula right now. Uh, there's no land in front of me, but I expect to see some in about an hour or so. Not sure if I'm going to be staying here for all that time. For me, the feeling of knowing you're approaching the Antarctic Peninsula while you're standing at the bow of the ship by yourself at six in the morning with the wind in the face, watching a beautiful sunrise and icebergs go by is second to none. That's when you know you made it to Antarctica. The dream you had 14 years ago has been realized. Our first landing in the Antarctic Peninsula was at Paulette Island. Paulette Island made it in the annals of Antarctic exploration history during the Swedish Antarctic Expedition of 1901 to 1904, when the remaining 20 crewmen of the Swedish vessel, the Antarctic, arrived in the island in 1903, 16 days after their ship was crushed by ice 25 miles away. It would remain on the island until they were rescued eight months later, after six men had launched a whaleboat two weeks earlier to go looking for help. The good news for these sailors was that the island was home to a very large colony of Adelie penguins, so food was not an issue. Remnants of the stone hut they built are still there. There is also a grave of one of the crew that died after arriving on the island. When we landed, the few hundred thousand penguins that were there a few weeks before were gone. Their molting phase was complete, and they were at sea feeding. There were a few stragglers still on the island. Even the naturalists were surprised. It was a sign of things to come on our expedition. Adult penguins go through an annual phase of catastrophic molting, where they replace all their feathers. During that time, they are very stressed, and until all their new feathers have grown back, they cannot go to sea to feed. In the meantime, we just enjoyed the fluffiness.
What better way to end your first day in Antarctica than with a Zodiac cruise at sunset?